Hey everybody, this is Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. This is part two of the video that I made last week, uh, 20 records every collector should own. First of all, sorry I phrased it that way, this is not like you should own these or you have to own these or I'm not trying to tell you what to do. This is just my opinion of things that would be great in your collection if you want to branch out past the more common things. There's nothing wrong with Led Zeppelin, Pink Floyd, Black Sabbath, uh, ACDC, Aerosmith, Allen Brothers, all that stuff. There's nothing wrong with those but I'm not mentioning them because there's too many to mention and I feel like most of you guys have already heard all that stuff already. So this is for people that want to take the next step. Also, if I forgot to mention an album that you think should have been mentioned, just comment in the comment section. Say, hey, everybody, check this album out. Check that album out. This is all about spreading the music, spreading the love. So let's get started. Uh, first album that I knew I should have added, as soon as I sat down and started, even while I was making the video, I was like, dang it, I, I left out one of my favorite albums that would be perfect for this list. First one is Velvet Underground and Nico. Oh my goodness, this is an incredible record. It's one of my favorites. It's 1967. Um, you know, Velvet Underground's manager was Andy Warhol. He was an artist. He designed this cover. That's why it says Andy Warhol. So this is a really cool cover. This is a peelable banana so that actually is a sticker on the front um, and this is the peeled version uh, I say peeled version this version used to look like this version before they peeled it so people a lot of times who couldn't control themselves they just peel this peel right off uh, but this is really cool because um, the first first pressing which is 1967 had this Eric Emerson it's called the Emerson cover and you see this guy hanging upside down um, long story short he uh, sued Verve Records because uh, they used his likeness, and so they had to airbrush the cover. So this is the cover that's airbrushed. Um, but anyways, that being said, it's a really fun album to collect because you always see the bananas in different states of undress. And, uh, you know, there's, there's three different states. They call it the torso cover. There's one with the sticker over it, and then there's the airbrush cover. Uh, but outside of the interesting interactive cover, there's great, great music in here. Uh, this is one that was a little bit of an acquired taste for me. The first couple times I listened to it, it was okay. Uh, but the more times I listened to it, the more I loved it. Uh, it's definitely outside of the box for uh, record collectors and, and, and music lovers of the time. You know, I've heard a quote that said, you know, 30,000 copies of this were sold and everyone who bought a copy started a band because it was so influential in the time. So this is a really important record. I can't believe I didn't add it to the last list, but this one, if you haven't heard it, you got to check it out. Uh, the next one, another one that I knew I should have added, and I can't, I'm kicking myself that I didn't add it to the first one, is Frank Zappa, Hot Rats. Now, when I was younger and I was in high school, I'd obviously heard of Frank Zappa, uh, but I, I started listening to some of his later stuff. And I just couldn't get into it. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't understand why people liked him so much. It was just so out there for me. Uh, but when I listened to this album and his other album, Chunga's Revenge, there's such good, strong guitar work in those records. And they're a lot more palatable than the later stuff. But now I love the later stuff because I was kind of eased into it. This is my gateway. So if you want to get into Frank Zappa and a little bit more abstract type of music, Frank Zappa, Hot Rats, is a great entryway to that. Um, this is a phenomenal record, and I think that this will help you cut your teeth into that world. So, Frank Zappa, Hot Rats. Uh, the next one, now that we're talking about Frank Zappa, you can't not mention Captain Beefheart. Now, Frank Zappa and Captain Beefheart were best friends slash enemies. Uh, long, long twisted history there, if you want to look it up. It's insane. Uh, but this is Captain Beefheart, Safe as Milk. Uh, this is the original red label, if you care. Uh, but yeah, Safe as Milk is a phenomenal record. Uh, it's got some gritty vocals. Beefheart had those great, uh, deep, gritty vocals. And uh, this is a lot of blues influence on this record. If you've heard uh, Captain Beefheart, Trout Mask Replica, that one is one that people really have a hard time getting into. This is a lot easier to listen to than that. Um, that's a great album. But the first time you hear it, you're going to be like, whoa, this is crazy. Uh, this is not quite as crazy, like I said, about the Zap, but this is more of an entryway if you want to get into Beefheart and some more psychedelic music and stuff like that. But this is an absolute phenomenal record. Captain Beefheart, Safe as Milk. Uh, my next pick is MC5, Kick Out the Jams. This is an incredible record. Um, so MC5 was a Detroit proto-punk band, just like the Stooges. Uh, the story kind of goes that uh, the record executives from Electra were coming to check out MC5 Live to sign them. And that night, uh, the Stooges opened for MC5, so they signed both bands on the same night. Uh, and so they're a lot in the same vein 
uh, from the same area, same type of music, but it's really high energy, uh, proto-punk, hard rock from the late 60s. So good, MC5, kick out the games. Uh, next record is Hawk Wind, Space Ritual. Um, this is a space rock record. Now, space rock kind of is more in the prog vein, uh, but you know, if you know Lemmy from Motorhead, he was in this band for a while. Space rock, if you're not familiar with that term, it's it's what it sounds like. It's rock from space, pretty much. It's high out there guitar solos, just really spacey. I mean, that's the best way to describe it. But yeah, this record is incredible. It's got a really good interactive fold out cover. It's a double LP and it's fantastic. Uh, if you're feeling a little crazy, throw on uh, Hawkwind Space Ritual. It will not disappoint. Next record is Big Star, number one record. This was such an important record, and I hesitated to put it on the list because original pressings are so expensive, uh, $250 to $300 usually, uh, but you can get the reissues for very affordably and easily get reissues. Uh, so this is actually a reissue. I'd love to get an original press someday, but uh, Big Star, number one record, was an incredible album that influenced a lot of people. Uh, it's another one it took me a couple listens to get into, but uh, once I did, I was hooked for life. So, very, very good album. Highly recommend Big Star number one record. Uh, the next album is George Harrison, All Things Must Pass. I hesitated to add this one because it's George Harrison is one of the Beatles. But um, after, when I was a kid, I, I, I just loved the Beatles to death. When I got into my teenage years, I discovered this record, and I was absolutely blown away. This made George Harrison my favorite Beatle. It's a triple LP. There's a lot of material on here, but he, he really shined... Uh, on this set as a songwriter and as a guitar player. Uh, this is an absolute masterpiece. Uh, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the greatest thing any Beatle ever did after the Beatles. Uh, so check out George Harrison's All Things Must Pass. Uh, the next choice I'll, I'll show is Replacements, Let It Be. This is probably the newest record that I'm showing in this entire video, uh, but this is right, uh, it's gonna ease you in into some new wave slash punk stuff. But it's just great songs written by um, just some phenomenal musicians. Uh, this is a highly influential record. It's the reason why I'm showing it. But this is one that's kind of on the same lines as Television Marquee Moon like I showed last time. Uh, but this is an absolute masterpiece. Uh, if you can get your hands on one of these, highly recommend it. Replacements, let it be. Uh, the next one I, I chose, I hesitated to ch show too because I feel like most people know who the Grateful Dead is. But I... For some reason, couldn't live with myself without putting this in. This is Grateful Dead American Beauty. Um, this was an album that kind of eluded me in my high school years. Uh, but the first time I listened to it, it just completely blew my socks off. I couldn't stop listening to it. It was stuck in my tape deck for years. Um, this is American Beauty. Just such an iconic album. From start to finish, it's absolutely phenomenal. If for some reason you haven't heard... Grateful Dead American Beauty, please check it out. It's one of my favorite records of all time. My next pick is uh, The Birds, Sweetheart of the Rodeo. Uh, this one is m the most country slash bluegrass album I will show. Now it's The Birds, you know, it's early psych rock, all that stuff. Uh, but this has a lot of bluegrass influence on it, but don't let that scare you away from it if you're not in that type of thing. This is an absolute masterpiece. They've got some covers on here. They've got some great songs that they wrote on here. But I think that this is my favorite era of The Birds, and uh, every song on it is just great. It's an album that's a feel-good album, makes me smile. I love hearing this record. The Birds, Sweetheart of the Rodeo, highly recommended. Uh, the next one, this is one that's a little bit farther out there as far as um, a little bit more obscure. Uh, this, there's a long story behind this record, Rodriguez, Cold Fact. Uh, Sixto Rodriguez was an amazing songwriter. Uh, he lived in Detroit as well, uh, but there's an incredible documentary, if you haven't seen it. Uh, it's called Searching for Sugar Man. I think it's on Netflix right now, but do whatever you got to do to find this. It's an amazing documentary. But it's about this guy, Rodriguez. He's just a crazy good songwriter. Uh, this goes in between singer-songwriter to psychedelic rock and back. It's just amazing. Uh, the lyrics on it are phenomenal. Uh, long story short, he was not a big deal in the U.S., but uh, he was extremely famous in South Africa, and he didn't even know. So it's an incredible story. If you can find that documentary really good stuff but uh this album i just discovered this album a few years ago and it just completely blew me away just 
unbelievable stuff. And then he has another album coming to reality, which is also absolutely fantastic. So uh, highly recommend Rodriguez Cold Factor. If you haven't heard it, check this album out. I almost added this last video and it didn't make it, but uh, since between then and now we've lost John Prine. Uh, this is John Prine self-titled. The first time I heard this record, the first track on it is Illegal Smile, and it's just so good. Uh, but John Prine was an incredible songwriter, one of the greatest songwriters to ever live. He just passed away last week, um, and it, just, it made me so sad to hear because he was such a talent. But um, his songs are just absolutely incredible. He was one of he he was a very prolific songwriter. He had a lot of really great albums. This one is my favorite. Uh, so check out John Prine. Really great album. Uh, now we're gonna go into some jazz. Uh, so this is one of my favorite jazz records. This is Bill Evans and Jim Hall. Um, this is an original master recording. You'll see in some of my pictures that I have this original master recording. It's like an audio file pressing. Some people like it. Some people don't. Whatever. I like them. Um, but this is uh, Bill Evans and Jim Hall. Uh, Bill Evans is one of my absolute favorites jazz uh, piano players. He played on an album that I talked about last time, Kind of Blue. Uh, but he, just an incredible, incredible jazz, jazz piano player. He's probably my favorite. And then Jim Hall is a guitar player. Uh, this is an album that early on I found a copy at a yard sale, and that cover just pulled me in. I had to, I had to hear what that sounded like. And the music's just absolutely phenomenal. If you put it on, it's going to, if you have a bad day, it's going to chill you out. It's, it's so good. Uh, the next one, this is uh, probably one of my favorite hard bop jazz records. This is definitely in my top three. Uh, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. Um, and they call this album Moanin'. The original pressings don't say Moanin' on it. It's just Blue Note 4003. Uh, but the you know everyone knows this as Art Blakey Moanin'. Uh, but this is just an incredible... Uh, early jazz records. It's on Blue Note Records. I'll go ahead and I'll show you the label. So if you're out digging and you see this uh, Blue Note label, pick it up. I mean, almost everything on that label is absolutely amazing. And a lot of times it can be worth some good money. But uh, Art Blakey was a phenomenal uh, jazz drummer. Uh, you got Benny Golson, Bobby Timmons, Lee Morgan. Lee Morgan's one of my favorite trumpet players, but you just got a great lineup of guys on this record. So uh, a, a tip for jazz you know, every jazz record has a bunch of different players on it. Uh, this is Art Blakey's record, but Lee Morgan really stands out on this album. Um, and so on the back, I mean, a lot of them, some of them are on the front, some of them are on the back, but you see all the jazz musicians that are involved in that recording. And so that's how you can kind of learn which jazz artists that you like. And so if you say, well, this album has these guys. I'm going to love it. You know, you can maybe have never heard of it before, but know because of the players on it that you're going to like that album. The next one, this is... Uh, I will call this Jazz Fusion. This is Miles Davis, Blues Brew. Um, unbelievable record. This is, it's jazz, but it's Jazz Fusion. It's nothing like most of the other stuff that Miles Davis did. Uh, there's great rhythms on this album. Um, just absolutely phenomenal. I think this is one of the most outstanding, influential records of all time. Uh, this one, it's going to bend your mind a little bit, but it is unbelievable. I mean, just an incredible record. It has some amazing players on it as well. Uh, and so if you haven't heard this record, you're in for a real treat. Check it out. Uh, next one is this Simandi. I may be saying it wrong. C-Y-M-A-N-D-E. Uh, this is a phenomenal record. It's uh, funky. It's soulful. Uh, it's, it's got some great beats on it, some great rhythms. Uh, my favorite track on this album is Bra, B-R-A. Um, I found this album in the bottom of a closet in a repossessed home years ago, and I threw it on, and it, and it knocked my socks off. It opened my mind up to so many different types of music, uh, but it just made me realize how many incredible albums are out there that I had never heard before. Uh, so this one, like I said, really opened me up to some different stuff. Uh, but if you like that, um, you know, instrumental soul funk type stuff these guys i mean there's afrobeat rhythms and stuff on here out of this world one of literally one of my favorite albums uh, this next one is the meters uh, and this one's original pressing but it may be difficult for you to find uh original pressing so don't be afraid to get a reissue uh, but this one in the last video i mentioned uh, booker t and the mgs green onions uh, this is another really great soulful um instrumental album the meters were absolutely essential it's been sampled by so many different people 
uh, but they have such a distinctive sound that influenced all types of drummers, guitar players, bass players, you name it. So check out the meters. You won't regret it. This will, this will definitely open your mind to some new things as well. This is an album that when I discovered it, I swear I didn't listen to anything else for a month. This is uh, Isaac Hayes, Hot Buttered Soul. I immediately tried to get every Isaac Hayes record I could get my hands on after finding this one, but this one's my favorite. Um, just really, really great uh, soul singer, Isaac Hayes. A lot of his albums I absolutely love, but this one's this one's my absolute favorite. This one's not hard to get. You can get one for like eight to ten bucks, probably tops uh, at most record stores. It's pretty pretty easily accessible. But uh, if you want to get in some new soul, and it is so good, Isaac Hayes, Hot Butter Soul. The last album I chose is uh, Electric Mud. Uh, this is Muddy Waters, Electric Mud. Uh, this is when he goes a little bit on the electric side. So. Um, there's a period of time, late 60s, that all these blues guys, they were the record labels were trying to get them to play electric guitars and play with bands and stuff like that. They all hated it, <laughs> but they put out some great stuff. Uh, this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Uh, you've got uh, Hoochie Coochie Man, I Just Want to Make Love to You, uh, I'm a Man. I mean, there's some great songs, and it's all electric, muddy water stuff. Um, if you like like Stevie Ray Vaughan type stuff like that, this is the roots of that. This is uh, just, I'm just going to show you the inside gatefold of this Muddy Waters just standing here with this Guild Electric. But, I mean, he's just got something tasty cooking for you. You just got to get ready for it. So, um, if you want to get into some blues stuff, uh, Muddy Waters is my absolute favorite blues man. Uh... His early records are different. He's got an album called Folk Singer that's really good. Uh, but this one's just one of those that just puts me in a good mood. I love hearing it. And the first time I heard it, it really opened me up to some different stuff. Um, I also wanted to give some other recommendations really, really quick. This one, uh, Lee Morgan, The Cooker, is a great album. It's one of my favorite jazz albums. It's very difficult to find at a good price. But um, Blue Notes, Tone Poet Series, uh, if you just Google that, you'll see... All types of really great jazz records being released. That's about to be released very soon. Uh, there's some other albums up here that I highly recommend. Cactus, uh, Judy Sill. Uh, great stuff up here that I didn't I didn't add to the video, but I also really love. As far as blues guys go, Howlin' Wolf, Lightning Hopkins, John Lee Hooker. They're great. Their albums are a little bit hard to find. I would highly recommend you finding those. Uh, Lee Morgan's another, uh, a great jazz player. There's a lot of great jazz out there. Uh, but I just kind of wanted to upload this video, give you guys some great advice for some records that you might dig. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Uh, find our social media links in the description. We post a ton of stuff online. Uh, we find huge collections and kind of show you guys the really interesting stuff that we find. So um, find us there if you want to support the shop right now. We've got t-shirts, hats, stickers on our website. The link below as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you next time.